Hello, welcome to our Meditations Veil Truths. Today we are looking at the parable of the rich man, the poor man, the rich man and Lazarus. And this is our fourth installment. Parables are stories that illustrate a truth. A truth with a twist located in things familiar. Jesus used this literary form in his teachings to his disciples in the first century. Some will get its meaning right away, others needed him to interpret them. The rich man and Lazarus, that parable is found in Luke 16, 19 to 31. And I read a couple of verses. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. In the first meditation on this parable, I positioned the that there are two individuals made in the image and likeness of God in key engaged in their personal pursuits, family, societal, and national life. One of them is rich and one is poor. In the second meditation, I spoke to the idea that we should not live life today as if it does not have an impact upon tomorrow, or that the things we do does not have implications for the future. In the third installment on this, The Rich Man and Lazarus, I spoke to the issue of poverty, that we all should work righteously at the issues of injustice, inequality, and poverty. Now, in this fourth meditation on the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, I note that the rich man is nameless at least in this record in the book of Luke. Although he is well-dressed, well-connected, and well-placed in life, here he is nameless. Lazarus, who is disabled by his weak state, dependent on crumbs falling from someone else's table, and unable to even chase the dogs around him, is named. Yes, he is named Lazarus. The word or the name Lazarus means supported by God in the Greek language. Now there is food for thought. What's in a name, you may ask? This designation would not have been lost on the audience of Pharisees who were overly concerned about their name and their place in society. They believed that their wealth could get them everything that they needed and desired. They somehow believed that that also included in having their name in the eternal book of life, or, as they would call it, in Abraham's bosom. How wrong they were. Jesus exposed their evil intent as religious zealots who talk the talk but fail to walk the walk. They fail to walk right before God and in relation to their human uh, companion. They were blinded to the desperate need right on their doorstep. I am certainly not saying that to desire the things of comfort in this life is wrong. Nor am I saying not to desire heavenly things by all means. What I am saying is 
to consider the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. For it says to us, one, do not forget the divinity in the humanity that sits at your door, on your street, or in your neighborhood. It could be you. Two, in reaching for heaven, don't forget that Jesus prayed that God's will be done on earth as in heaven. So let us not be so heavenly minded that we are of no earthly use. We are the children of God, destined to produce fruit for his kingdom in the now and the hereafter. Jesus the Christ taught the people many things by parables. That which was veiled has now been revealed. So let us learn from these earthly stories and draw closer to God. May God open our minds to understand his will. Open our eyes to see his doings. Open our ears to hear his bidding. Open our hands to receive his blessings. And open our hearts to love his children. Amen. God bless you and have a great day.